Okay, hey boys and girls, welcome back to uh, Monroe Live. And today we're gonna be talking about evolution, uh, not the kind you were thinking. This is the evolution from our first chance to have a look at how the folks at, at uh, Tesla were manufacturing their vehicles. This is the infamous, there's 120 parts here, uh, kind of car. Inside, you can see I've made lots and lots of comments about how much of an issue it is to try and put together the original Model 3. Now, uh, did that make people happy? Uh, probably not. And if I would have probably gone to uh, a normal car company and said this kind of stuff, um, the insults that I slung would probably have been looked at as a real big issue but not, but not to Elon Musk. I said this should be one part, one part. And I was talking basically about half of this. And guess what? One part. But Elon is one of those guys who's never really quite satisfied. So the one part and the connecting parts and the other part, the other casting, he felt should be one part. And guess what? That's what he did over here. This is the Model Y. This is the casting for the Model Y. And you can see that it's all one part. And you can see that there's a lot of room in here, a lot of room to put in a plastic tray. And if you remember back there on the Model 3, this used to be another chunk of sheet metal. Actually, it was aluminum, but it didn't matter. It was useless, wasted space. This is a good idea, and it evolves. He started out one way, he got a suggestion, he did a, basically what we thought would be the right thing to do, and then he went one step further. But that's not all he did, right? So he went from no castings to two castings, to one casting in the back, and then we move to the front of the car. And here we have the front castings. Now, a front casting. Now you'll notice too that there's this gigantic open space right here. Um, that used to be called the firewall. They changed it because people were oh, intimidated by the word fire in firewall. But in essence, it was there in case the engine caught on fire. That's why they called it a firewall. This thing is now one great big giant chunk of plastic. Why? Because they can do it. It doesn't do anything else. These castings are so rigid, so strong, so incredibly well designed, you don't need that extra piece of sheet metal to close it out. And then he went one step further. And that's why you see this gigantic hole where a floor usually sits. Because, again, these guys at Tesla, they take everything that you say literally, and then they go and basically implement. It's amazing. It is truly, to me, amazing that these guys can do so much in such a short period of time. Now, we talked a little bit about the rear end of the vehicle, but on the Tesla Model Y that we tore to pieces, um, the, uh, the first one, uh, you can see that all these pieces turned into a good number of those. Uh, a good number of those pieces turned into a casting. Now, let's, let's, think about, let's think about this casting for a little bit. And I'm sure that there are some engineers out there are going, oh no, he's gonna rub our nose in it again. And the answer is correct. Let's go over here. A front casting, a rear casting, a center casting that uh, basically is also could potentially be the um, could potentially be the uh, the battery storage area. Three castings, been here for 15 years. So let's talk about evolution, okay? So there are some animals who haven't evolved at all over the centuries. They're still, they look kind of like prehistoric. They are prehistoric. And, 
And yet, other animals, like a horse, went from something about the size of a dog, a small dog, to what we see today. How does that happen? Why do they evolve? Well, it has something to do with intelligence. Voila. You went from basically a dinosaur to uh, something a lot more, uh, lot more creative and inventive to the world-class design that you see sitting over here. And now, so I can uh, cut off uh, some folks at the pass, if you crack that casting, don't think about getting it fixed because you can't possibly imagine what it would be like the difference between smashing that casting and bending your longitudinals. The longitudinals are those things that basically go from the front to the back of the car, and they're the things that if they get bent, if they get crushed, then your car is scrapped. Why is it that so many people are saying that, oh, well, if you crack the casting, oh my God, well, blah, blah. You know what? The same thing happens with steel because when the longitudinals are bent, you can't fix it, period. The insurance company doesn't want that car back on the road because it's unsafe. Now, here's something that's really gonna blow your mind. If you do happen to bake, break a casting, it can be TIG welded back together. Oh no, oh no, that's not, that's contrary to popular belief. I'm not popular. So all I can tell you is that this is the right way to do business. And the reason for that is because it saves the company hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands, hundreds of millions of dollars. Hundreds of millions of dollars, not to mention the square footage that you need for a plant that would do all these different stampings and whatnot. You need stamping machines, you need dyes, you need people to operate them, you need robots, you need Pillsbury, you need pits in the floor, you need people to drag the, basically the swarf, the swarf or, excuse me, swarf or off wall out of the plant You've got forklift trucks, you've got big trucks, little trucks, all running around, forklift trucks, everybody doing everything. And yet, when you've got castings, when you've got castings and castings, the mold closes, the mold opens. The parts come out, they go into a trim die, and they head for a little bit of machining. This, once you, or sorry, the, the black one over there, the Model 3, what had happened with that? Stamp, 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 stamps, hundreds of times, then put glue on it, then weld it all up, then check for the welds, then try and straighten it out with two by fours because you do that on the factory floor because that's, that's what happens, steel springs. This is like a stone, it doesn't move. Anybody that's watching this, this video and is going to design a new product, a new car, a new vehicle, a new truck, whatever, think seriously about this. By the way, there is no heat treat required for this because it happens so quickly in basically in less than a second. I'm not gonna try and tell you in, in, in uh, milliseconds, but, <clears throat> but less than a second this is filled up. That means there's no induced stress. It moves too quickly to have induced stress like a normal casting. This is the way to go. This is my all-time favorite um, structural members inside of any vehicle that I've seen so far. I'm really happy with it. I really cut you off, no, I'm sorry. Sandy, yeah. that was the longest and the best intro to a Monroe Live video I've seen from you in a long time. This Monroe Live video is sponsored by Anchor and their 757 power station. Sandy, what do you see right here when we got this thing? Okay, so when we got it, uh, the first thing I did is I looked at these coils and I said, how come there's so many? And then I figured out, look at all these different outputs. This thing has to go from AC to DC, 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 and DC basically to smaller DC. So I, that's why these coils are here to, uh, to eliminate any sort of issues that you're going to have with, uh, with stray voltage and things like that. And the cells are LFP. LFP is lithium iron phosphate. And our battery module, when we pulled it out, it was very well assembled. It had this nice cover on top. You can see the bus bar strategy is something we see out of only the most right. advanced EVs. Yeah, so this thing is uh, basically uh, 1.2 kilowatt hours, a little bit more than 1.2, but I'm telling you, this is fabulous. 
And then it's got connections back here, not only for 110, like we're plugging it in. And by the way, it takes an hour to charge this thing, which is wicked fast. And then it's also got a connection for your solar panel. I'm, I'm very, very impressed. Um, I would say uh, so this has definitely got my seal of approval. If you're, uh, if you're into camping and whatnot, you should buy one of these. At Monroe, we don't take our recommendations lightly. We've had our entire electronics team over here reviewing the circuit boards, the circuitry, even the assembly of the housing. Anchor really thought out how this thing is built, and it's a really high quality product. Uh, one thing I want to add is cost of quality. So, yeah. first of all, this has happened in a short period of time. We received that Model 3 in late 2017, early 2018, and this is mid-2020. And to see the evolution go from that to this is quite amazing. It's actually made our job easier because back when we had to do a cost analysis on that Model 3, we're dealing with hundreds and hundreds of parts, structural adhesive, not only welds, but that's a mixed material body. So you have aluminum, you have steel, so there's Henrob, self-piercing rivets. It's really complicated for us and our team to analyze all of the equipment needed to manufacture this. Tesla's made it a little bit easy for us to assess this body because the part count is dropping every time we tear a Tesla down. Now, Sandy, you've been a pioneer of lean design for 35 years, 40 years. Can you explain cost of quality to our engineers? What does that okay. mean? So the cost of quality is a, a term that we use that, um, that applies to the whole car. So if I have a part that causes um, other parts to be um, um, uh, massaged or, or, or adjusted or whatever, that part that's causing the defect has a cost of quality associated with it. And we can calculate that. Calculating the cost of quality is a little more difficult than uh, most of the other type of costing that we do. But cost of quality is very, very important because in many cases, in many cases what happens is the cost of quality turns out to be more than the part cost. Or it definitely will turn out to be more than, than the shipping, receiving, uh, supplier, delivery, logistics, everything else. It can really be expensive. Why do we bring up the cost of quality? Because this has virtually none. It's always exactly the same. When I talked about BMW, I said that they have a carbon fiber body and basically the carbon fiber is a stone when it gets all done. Well, what does that mean? It means that I can make a perfect car every time. This doesn't have a whole lot of cost of quality associated with it because first, it's going to be, uh, it's a part that in essence is going to come in the same every time. And when you're building products, similar or the same is what you're really shooting for. I don't want any deviation, right? So Dr. Deming used to say, as deviation is reduced, quality increases. A variation and deviation, same thing. Variation or deviation is reduced, the quality is increased, and that's what we've got here. This is a high quality product, and I don't care which one of the um, <coughs> marketing guys out there is trying to get you to not buy one of these by telling you something like, you know, range anxiety or, or you know, these things could crack. Any of these kind of characters, they're paid to come up with uh, deception. This, this is the right way to go. Yeah, and Tesla's not just improving by adding these large castings. They've improved the body side inner and outer. So what we mean by body side, here's the body side outer and body side inner. These are now hot stamped. Um, they're hot stamped steel. And Sandy can explain what hot stamped steel is. It's usually much stronger, right. ultra high strength steel, very high strength steel. And if you go back and look at the Model 3, similar architecture, but look at how complicated these body side inners and outers are. You have multiple shingled layers. Notice this pillar is not part of the lower. And there's a shingling going on here, uh, right here in the, in the kick up. And there's Taylor welded blanks here. So they went from a more complicated body side inner and outer on the, model, on the Model Y right here that we got in 2020. They went to a single piece inner and outer and they've even Im improved it further by eliminating all of this floor structure. Mm -hmm. So 
it's not just the castings. They're rethinking how they're doing all their pieces and parts of the vehicle. This was an extrusion on our 2020, and now it's integrated as part of the casting on the 2022. And this is the kind of evolution that we're hoping the other car companies are gonna to go to. Is this a tough pill to swallow for, um, for the executives and even the engineers? Sure it is. It's, it's a departure from the way they've always done everything. And everybody always wants to do the same thing over and over again, hoping for different results. And it never is going to change until you make some dramatic change like that. So the tip today for all the engineers out there is to start considering what's, what's normal and everyday practice today, but what should we be doing tomorrow? It's time to invent. We're not, uh, we're not in the olden days. The good old days weren't always that good anyway, but the good old days are gone. We're in the new day. This is the new era. Time to move on up. Anyway, with that, do you have anything? One last thing. Monroe & Associates creates reports on these vehicles. We usually don't mention it in every video. We're usually asking for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, but we have a report on the Model 3 that was done in 2018. We have a report on the Model Y. This one was done in 2020. And we're, we're creating a variation report that's a little more affordable for OEMs, Tier 1s, Tier 2s. If you're out there and you want to know how the 2022 Model Y improved over the 20, 2020, the battery pack, the, the structural pack, the cover, 4680 cells, and all those minute, minute details, we're going to be selling that. So if you're interested, email us at sales at leandesign.com and we can let you know what that'll cost. Yeah. Anything else, Andy? No, I think that we pretty much covered everything. Um, I'm just encouraging people to, uh, to try and do the best you can to move ahead, to move along. And, um, and the, the last thing I'd like to say is um, many people know that uh, Herbert Dietz uh, got sacked over at VW. Um, I personally think that he was uh, the best thing they had at VW. If, um, if you happen to be looking for a new um, executive to run your company, I think uh, Herbert is going to become available in September. With that, uh, thank you all for watching, and we'll be hoping to see you again soon. Bye now.